Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Monique and I'm on a financial health journey to create an inheritance for the generations to come. I want to do that through consistency and discipline. Today is June the 28th. I got paid today. Um, it is Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. And it's the end of the week and the last day. So uh, I am happy. I am excited. And we are here to do a budget with me. And one of the things that I did want to cover is how I transition to a weekly plan for our money, even though I get paid bi-weekly. And so that's what we're going to talk through a little bit more today. So I have all of the tools that I use here. You don't always see all of this typically, but I'm just going to walk through this process just in the event that it might help somebody. Um, I'd like to thank anybody who's liked or commented on any of my videos and especially those that have chosen to subscribe to my channel. Truly started this as a way to hold myself accountable, but I understand, recognize, and appreciate the community as a whole. So if you're rocking with me on this journey, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't made up your mind yet, sit with me for a spell. At the end of this video, if it's content you find valuable or enjoyable, please feel free to subscribe. Myself and my, my sweets, we recently got married. We got a whole bunch of kids and we're trying to figure out a way to combine our future, our family, and our finances because we want to make sure that the decisions we're making now don't negatively impact them in the future. So the the bulk of this video will be around my weekly plan because that's the most important thing. That's the thing that helps myself and Sweets to walk through our budget together every Sunday when we sit down and we talk about what money came in and what money needs to go out, okay? So, but I do want to show you guys kind of how I got to the point where I have the information documented on the weekly plan. So, you know, if you've seen any of my, my recent videos um, that I got this calendar from the monthly calendar from Walmart, it was $7 and it just has the monthly view. So you're looking at July here, then it moves to August. Um, nope. There you go. <laughs> it moves from to August, then it moves to September, et cetera, et cetera. So I go from this, where I document my paycheck cycles, where I document all of the bills that come in, the amount, and where I doc document all of my life events so that I can make plans for those if I need to financially. So I move from this to going to my paycheck budget. So in my digital planner, and I usually car carry around my iPad mini, but I'm going to show you in the larger scale here, the uh, iPad that I typically use for my videos. And um, I go from my monthly calendar view to my bi-weekly paycheck budget. This is how I budget this way, digitally and by paycheck. And I still do that for me. And I do this for him. That way on Sundays, I'm looking at this, he's looking at this, and we're reconciling things. But I do need to make sure that I am delineating anything that needs to happen for the first week versus the second week as far as my paycheck is concerned. And that way when I'm having conversations with him, they align with what he's looking at weekly here. So that's what we'll talk about really quickly. And then I'm moving right into my weekly plan. So let me zoom in just a bit so that you guys can see. So this is my um, budget sheet that's in the Breezy Organization Catch-All Planner that she has for 2024. This is what I'm using today. And what you'll notice here is that I've got as my dates here, June 28th through July the 11th, because that's my paycheck bi-weekly cycle that I am uh, documenting here and that I follow. Okay. All right. So let's start with the income bills account. I put in 1500 variable expense account. I put in 780. My rollover was $200 and you'll see a few little asterisks there. I actually got an S oh, wait, wait, what happened? What happened? Oh, y'all. What did I do? What did I do? Jesus. June. Oh, I'm under the wrong one. That's a daily plan. I got so many planners, y'all. All right, let me close these out so that we won't get confused again. There you go. All right, now we're good. <laughs> so um, I am here and I was going to show you where these asterisks are. And what I was going to say is that one of these needs to be removed. Let's take that one away. All right, so 
for my income, you'll notice it's $1,500 that I put into my bills account. Uh, $780 went into my variable expense account. Rollover says 202. You see an asterisk there and you see an asterisk here for gas south. So I thought I was going to have $132 to roll over. That's what I closed out my last weekly budget at is um, $132 under budget. I was going to roll over $100 and leave $32 in my bills account as a buffer. With that said, Gas South still hasn't come out. I planned for that in the last paycheck cycle because I wasn't sure when it would actually hit. It still hasn't hit yet. So I rolled over that $102 as well. I put that Gas South on this uh, bi-weekly paycheck breakdown because I still need to track and make sure that it came out and we've already closed out the prior week. So not only did I roll over the money, that I had a set aside for that bill. I also rolled over the bill itself so that I can account for that money and not think that I have an extra $102 available. So that's the asterisk that you see that's letting myself know that's why that rollover amount is more, Monique. You didn't, you don't have extra money to spend. It is there for a reason. So I rolled over $202. My property insurance sinking fund, I pulled 150 from that to help cover the cost of the property insurance that's due on the 4th. And then a coin cash in. So my coin jar is empty. My coin tower is empty once a quarter. So we're and we're at the end of the month. It's the last Friday of the month. And so um, I went ahead and cashed it out. And it was like $23, I think it was. But after fees and stuff, I used that little coin star machine. I know I could probably go to the bank, but I, I didn't know. So the Coinstar um, machine took, took has this little admin fees or whatever. Anyway, I cashed it out at $19. And so that's what you see here. And that money will be rolled over and used in savings challenges. So when you total all of that together, my total amount, as far as my income is concerned, is $26.51. When we get to fixed expenses on this particular sheet, fixed expenses includes bills, subscriptions, and debt, okay? In my weekly view for the baddies and budgets, budget binder that I'm using, they separate those out. They separate fixed expenses as just bills. They have a section for subscriptions. They have a section for debt, but this form doesn't do that. So they're all combined here together. Um, you see this darker black line that's separating it. So what's important for me is to always list out my fixed expenses by, based on the due date that I have because that's what helps me to figure out what we're going to be looking at for week one and then what we're looking at for week two as far as my paycheck is concerned. That way it matches up with what Sweets is looking at in week one, week two. And here you see the fourth is the, the line that you see there. So my first week will run June 28th through July the 4th. My second week will run July 5th through July the 11th. And so this is what we'll, we'll, you will see. So you'll see all of these bills on the week one that we're gonna talk about in a moment in the paper budget. And then here is the week two that we'll talk about in the next week that I do. Um, so all of those total together equals 1470. And that leaves me with 1181 that I'm remaining remaining for me to work with. Next is my variable expenses. And again, I do the same thing. Week one, what am I giving myself? Week two, what am I giving myself? I tend to give myself about $300 per week, but sometimes this is different. How I allocate the money is different. Um, they look the same this time and they are, but not always. Sometimes one week might have more in groceries versus another because there's a holiday coming up and I need to plan differently, et cetera. It's hard to say. But this time, I just document out what week one looks like, what week two looks like. When I do my actuals, I'm going to do the same thing, week one and week two, and separate them that way. But for right now, that's a total of $600 I'm expecting to spend on variable expenses. That leaves me with $581. Next, Monday Mini because we're going into sinking funds and savings challenges Monday mini. I give myself $120 for two weeks. That's $60 a week. Uh, and I have those combined here uh, because it's easier for me to track it that way for sinking funds and savings because I don't always give to these during that, that middle week, right? I just give to these when I get paid. So Monday mini is um, was $120 and then that extra $19 
that I had from the coin cash in. And that's why you see that at 139. I'm putting $100 in my family binder um, today, 20 in my June challenge, $40 in subscrip subscriptions, which is a sinking fund. And then you see a sinking fund here for $120 and there's three amounts there. What's the difference between those? This subscription is cash. These subscriptions stay online in Alley in a high yield savings account in their particular buckets. That's why they're separated out like that. All of that totals up to $419. And when you take that away from the 581, yes, 581 that we had saving, um, the 581 that we carried over onto the sheet, then you sh you should see a $162 under budget amount. So at the end of this paycheck period, I'm hoping to roll over $162. So this is how I do my budget as far as my bi-weekly paycheck breakdown. And then I take my paper binder and I do this for sweets so that he has it. We go in and we go through what the weekly view looks like. Now, I know that this seems like a lot and um, for some it may be, but at the end of the day, this is what helps me to not only manage my money, but to make sure that my sweets is always aware of what's going on. And I'm learning that the key to this marriage and money concept is definitely communication. So everybody's got to know what everybody's doing. And this is the best way I've found so far to have that done. So we won't have to... Um, storm through these numbers anymore because we've already gone through it as far as my paycheck budget. But at this point, when I come over here, I'm just copying information. I've already got it documented in my digital planner. And so it's not like I'm figuring all of these numbers out again. I, I've already got them written down. So all of the income together was $26.51. And then I use that line to tell me which of my fixed expenses I need to document here. And these are all the ones I need to document and I need to separate it by fixed expense, subscription and debt, because that's the way that she does it on this baddies and budgets budget sheet. So all of my fixed expenses together for the time period of June 28th through July 4th add up to $1,233. Again, gas south is here with the asterisk and rollover is up here with the asterisk as well. And I can erase this asterisk for electric. That was there because I didn't know how much that bill was gonna be. I sometimes like to budget $150 for electric, but it came in at 123. So that's why I had that asterisk and I went ahead and removed it. All right, so 1233 is the total for fixed expenses. Variable we talked about, week one, $300. That hasn't changed. I took out that Spotify um, and put it separately here for subscriptions. That was $15. And that's the total that you see here. So on this baddies and budgets form at this point, I gotta I have to figure out my numbers. So my fixed expenses together, 1233 plus 300 plus 15 equals $1,548. 548 five hundred and forty eight dollars that's what we have listed for expenses income was twenty six fifty one and so what's the total remaining minus twenty six fifty one one thousand one hundred and three dollars all right so that's what we have remaining over there next i looked at my numbers over here on my digital um planner and the only debt that I have is, well, I have two, Nelnet and Alley is a credit card. Those are the two debts that I have. And for both of those, they're going to get paid out in week two. So I don't have to worry about documenting them over here under debt. Some people would say mortgage is a debt. It is. But here I am tracking just my consumer debt because I don't really have plans to pay off my mortgage early, at least not now. And my thought would be if I'm going to do anything, I'll sell it and get something else. <laughs> but um, I don't have that listed here because I really want to track more so the consumer debt. So that's why you don't have anything listed here. And then for my actuals, for um, my sinking funds, here are all of the amounts that I have listed. The money to the family binder, 
the money for the June challenge, subscriptions, property insurance, emergency, and Xerxes. So here I don't document them separately because of online versus cash because Sweets doesn't care about that. That's more so for me so that I'm allocating my money right, putting the money in alley like I'm supposed to, but he doesn't care about that. He just really cares about the final numbers. And so just for the sinking funds themselves, I have a total of $280. That was That's what you see here. Now, unbudgeted is usually a blank um, piece here, and I normally don't put these in until the actuals happen, but I already know um, Xerxes groom cost about $5 more than typical. Um, boy, when Lily saw him, it was funny. When she came out from the, in the back, when I dropped him off on yesterday, she came out, she said, hey, big, mm. <laughs> it sounds like yeah, that's going to cost me quite quite a bit of penny because um, he's been he's been uh, MIA for a minute. So anyway, it was five dollars more than I anticipated. I put in fifty dollars for Latin last week's budget, but it was fifty five. So I'm going to account for that unbudgeted extra five dollars here. Um, but I'm not going to write it in these numbers down here just because these are around my budgeted amounts. And I just went ahead and documented it here, but we'll reconcile that when we go through the closeout for this week. All right, so Monday Mini, instead of it being $60, I'm giving that extra $19 now. So that's going to be $79 that we should expect to see. Oh, no. Oh, no. I wrote that one in. Son of a gun. Well, I wrote it in a regular ink. I don't know why I did that. So this erasable pen has been uh the bomb okay so 79 here we'll just go by that oh i'm mad okay total income is 26.51 minus expenses which was 15.48 my debt was zero sinking funds was 280 and savings and investments was 79 we're not going to worry about the unbudgeted amount just yet all right so 26.51 Minus 15.48 minus 2.80 minus 79 equals. So on, on Sweet's form, it's going to say that we are $744 under budget. Okay. But we all know that's because all of the bills are not accounted for yet. I really should only expect to have $162 over. Um, so that's why I keep my paycheck budget over here because this number will fool you. You'll be like, hey, I'm living large and you're really not living at all. All right. I am not going to um, do anything yet around the weekly check-in as far as the meal plan is concerned. I did go in and number them differently. I think I told you guys my weeks run from a Friday to a Thursday of the next week, although this form went from Sunday to Saturday. So I went in, changed the dates and put the actual day itself on there. And we'll work this out um, later on today, what this is supposed to look like. I know I won't be cooking on Friday, so I'm not overly stressed, but I'll let you know what I budgeted and what the actuals are when I do a closeout for this. Over here, you've got my cash breakdown and I've already um, notated all of the places where I need to get cash out. You'll notice, which I mentioned before, Three of my sinking funds, Xerxe Emergency and Property Insurance, stay online in the Alley account. That's why you have lines going here. Um, also, one of the other things you'll notice over here is uh, for gas. Although I give myself $40, I go ahead and put $20 in my tank immediately from and swipe for that. And then I take the other $20 only and put it into the variable expense envelope. And that's why I'm just getting the cash out for $20 for that one. And then you'll notice here for Monday Mini, I just mentioned that normally I do $60, but now I'm going to do $79. Uh, but I already have that $19. I went uh, yesterday, cashed in the coins. They gave me $19 in cash. And so I already had that. So I only need to get $60 more out. So today when I do my bank run, it's going to be for $480. Um, 1220s, 1010s, 18.5s. And 51s, and if you add all of that together, it ends up being that 480. Uh, and I will show you this is my version right here of a teller slip. So I'm gonna, <laughs> this is an envelope, 
and I'm passing them this envelope. This is what I did the last time that I did this because I'm not used to getting this much cash and I'm trying to change things. You know, guys, we're doing we're going to start using credit cards and pulling money and unstuffing and all that kind of stuff. So all I do is I'm going to take my withdrawal slip. I'm going to stick it on top of this and I'm going to let her know she can put the money in this envelope. And here's the breakdown that I want for all of that. And so this is my teller slip uh, as well as my money bag. All right, and then the last thing that I'll mention is that we will do a check-in at the end of this week to see how much money we have left in our variable expenses. So I document here all of the money that is currently in these envelopes. That's rollover from last week's budget. And then here, my budgeted amount. So my budgeted amount for groceries is 100 I'm giving myself $40 for gas, although I'm only getting 20 in cash. Remember, I'm going to swipe my card for the other 20 for home, I'm giving myself 30. Dining, I'm giving myself 40. Supplements, I'm gonna give myself 25. Pets is 10, extra is five. And the amounts that I have for myself, my personal cash and Corinne's cash, I don't document them here because they we don't have envelopes for those in the variable expense binder. That's just blow money pretty much that we have. All right, so I have those documented. At the end of this week, I'll see what's remaining so that I understand how much we spent. So that is the budget, I think. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That is the budget for now. Um, on my weekly form, it shows that we are going to be under budget by $744. But as I showed you guys before, when you look at my um, digital planner, you know that we know for the whole bi-weekly paycheck cycle, I'm really only expecting to roll over $162. So this is my guide because I know that this amount is not correct. So this is the guide that I go by. Uh, and then this helps me and Sweets for our conversations. And then that is it. All right, so that was a lot to cover. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, let me know if there are any other ideas for anyone else that's trying to figure out how to manage um, conversations with your loved one, with your Sweets. Um, if you guys do things differently, if you're doing them the same, if you've had to tweak some things, please feel free to leave that in the comments. I'm always looking for more information to help me get better at this. But I think that is it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for your time. You guys have a good one.